India is an enormous country encompassing numerous religions and languages and every possible landscape. Likewise, Indian cooking is far from monolithic. To begin to understand it, we need to divide India into regions. Savir Saran, chef owner of New York City's Devi restaurant, helps us out. When you think of India, you have to think north, south, east, west. And in the north, you have New Delhi, which has amazing uh, vegetarian food and the meats of the northwest frontier. As west is um, Kashmir and perhaps Pakistan and Afghanistan. In southern India, you have Kerala, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh, and they each have cities that are have glorious foods, seafood, vegetables, even pork and uh, beef get cooked in southern India. There's a whole Christian community and a Muslim community that eats the meats Hindus don't eat. In western India, you have Bombay, which has amazing seafood where they do nothing more than just use butter and uh, use lobsters that are eaten with a butter and garlic sauce. You have Bengal where you get fish that's cooked with mustard oil. So these are the parameters that you look at when you think of India. Predominantly used in North India, it's roasting of the spices. And this is called bhuno, B-H-U-N-O. And in this technique, in an unseasoned pan, you add the spices. And you have to let it um, literally turn color uh, from light to dark. And I won't tell you right now, I mean, this is like a, uh, going into specifics as to, to what level it should brown because different recipes call for different levels of brownness. So you can't just say, okay, just put it in a pan and brown it. So you uh, toast it in a pan, unseasoned, and you cook it till it turns darker and darker to the desired consistency and remove it. And it develops this incredible depth, smokiness, and also just the, um, uh, it, it, um, the jarring gives a deeper flavor so that this kind of roasted sp spice, when it's ground and added to a dish, it, um, uh, I think it makes, gives a more assertive flavor to the dish. And um, one great example is um, a tandoori chicken, that when you eat, it suddenly you know, comes alive because uh, it's basically is a yogurt marinade with few herbs. And then you wonder, my God, what is this incredible flavoring? It's the few spices which have been pan roasted to uh, bring more depth to it and of course the smoky aroma. And then uh, it's ground and added as a spice wrap. In Northern India, we have the garam masalas, the hot mixes, which have cumin, um, cumin, coriander, cardamom, clove, cinnamon, nutmeg, mace. So the spices are a little warmer. In Southern India, we have curry leaves, mustard seeds, fenugreek seeds and chili peppers that are fried in oil, bloomed in oil, to bring out their essential flavors. In Indian cooking, the principles lie in handling of spices. Even though it's a single subject, it is a whole world. And uh, one of the most important techniques of Indian cooking uh, with the spices is tarka, T-A-R-K-A, in which the spice, uh, let's take mustard seeds for example, they add it to hot oil, and I'm really talking about boiling hot, smoking, because the moment the spice is added, it should pop within two seconds. It shouldn't be like slowly simmering and then decide maybe I will pop or not. Shouldn't because mustard seeds must pop to become you know, sweet. Otherwise they're bitter by themselves, and it's not a pleasant experience. Tarka is, as I said, it is used in um, uh, finishing a braised dish, just to give a final flavor. It is used in uh, yogurt salads of South India. And of course, the most important place is in dal, which is uh, lentil purees. And it just completely brings the um, dal alive. Uh, and of course, you can also use the tarka as a salad dressing. And Indians make um, curry dishes, which is of course, curry doesn't mean in a sauce, this is like a stir fried dish, in which the tarka or seasoned oil or seasoned butter as it's called, spice perfumed oil in which the cooked vegetables are folded and it becomes like a warm, um, warm vegetable salad. So that's another technique. American chefs looking for inspiration will find it on Indian spice racks. Many Indian seasonings could cross over to the Western kitchen giving familiar dishes like a simple roast chicken renewed appeal. 
Abhijit Saha, executive chef at the Park Hotel in Bangalore, tells us about some of his favorite herbs and spices. In the Western culture and in the Western kitchens, what I see is there is more usage of fresh herbs rather than spices. And some of the spices that are used uh, in the West are used mainly for preparing certain crusts on roast meat. So what I feel that in uh, the spices of India, they can be used to prepare the, those crusts as well as they can be used for braising any kind of meat or any kind of sauce that you use in Western cooking could be you know, flavored by tempering with Indian spices. And curry leaf is such an interesting herb, you know, it's, it's more of a herb than, rather than a spice. So in case you're using rosemary or thyme or any kind of herb that you're using in your cooking, in Western cooking, you can definitely use, substitute that with curry leaves. And there are some more ingredients which I feel could be of potential use to uh, people here. I think the spices which are, the way we grind our mustard is again different in, 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 in India. It's very different from the Western technique, and you can use the Indian style of doing mustard, mustard-based curries. And then you have also things which are uncommon to the West yet, that is asafoetida. If you want to flavor your uh, sauces or you want to flavor your meats with a different flavor, which is similar to onion and garlic, but yet it is much more uh, stronger and you get a straight uh, flavor out of it, then asafoetida is one of the answers that you have for from the Indian spices. Spices uh, are added in a dish, sometimes at the beginning of uh, a preparation, or in the middle, or in the end. And it makes a difference as to when you add it. Plus, if you add it, if you add one spice, or whether you add a combination of them, or you add the combination in stages, you know, progression, all that makes a difference. What we do with spices is that we study them, we understand them, we play with them, and then we let them influence us instead of us manipulating them. Their intricate values of flavor educate us as chefs in India. And then once we've understood what the flavor distinct characters of each spice is, we then use them and put them in different stages of cooking. There are spices that go whole in the beginning, go ground at the end. There are spices that go as toasted powders at the end of cooking. There are spices that get fried in oil and used as a perfume at the end of cooking. And it's all of this that a Western chef can come and study in an Indian kitchen and then take back. When you add a spice at the beginning of the dish, uh, usually you add it uh, in two forms. Either it's in the form of a paste, that is you combine it with other um, spices and water and, and grind it up and then you fry that uh, in little oil and then you're adding other ingredients. That's one form. Or you could add it just straight into the oil. So that will have a completely different flavor than if you add the spice in the middle because then you're adding raw spices straight into a liquid so it will have a boiled steamed fragrance so more floral. On the other hand, if you add in the end, and of course when you're adding a spice in the end, it has to be cooked because you, uncooked spices are not healthy. So you'd be toasting what we call roasting spices. So those, so when you add in the end and it's roasted, it gives another dimension and that's very pronounced because it hasn't been cooked down. Because cooking dilutes or what is called tempers or mellows the flavor of the spice. And it is not a bad thing. See, what Indians do or Indian cooks do is that they, they play with all these different levels and types and stages and forms of spices. And they add them at different times. So each one adds a level of flavor. This is called the layering and complexity. And it's, it's, it's wonderful because at the end, you just have one spice like cumin and you add it in the beginning in a paste form, then in the middle you just thrown some, then you roast it and add it in the end. Just in three different forms it adds, you know, as though you add a whole, you know, bottle of spices.